Wasabi, you guys. Welcome to Integration B Training for Advanced. This is part 11.1. .1. In this section, we will be learning about complexifying the integral. Okay? Now, this doesn't mean we're going to use complex analysis. No. Unfortunately, I know nothing about complex analysis. I know nothing about contour integration or any stuff like that. So unfortunately, uh, that's, that won't be covered. This is just complexifying the integral algebraically, okay? Now, what, what is complexifying the integral? So what, what does that even mean? So we know this famous uh, formula here, right? Cosine of x plus i times sine of x, right? Okay, so here we have the real part and the imaginary part, right? So whenever you have something like a plus bi, okay, a is the a is the real part of this, and b is the imaginary part of this. Okay, that's how we say it. So in this case, the way we say it here is that cosine of x is the real part of e to the ix. And the way we kind of notate this, we just kind of write it like this, or you could just write it as re. Uh, but I'm so used to the curvy r. Okay. And then here, or sine of x, here I just, I do just use the, I just do im. Or just, just the typical im e to the ix, okay? Whichever notation you want to use, I'm just very used to this curly r thing, that's all. But uh, it doesn't matter, That's this is what this means, right? Cosine is the real part of this, sine of x is the imaginary part of this, okay? And another thing that I must show you is if you remember the intermediate training, if you remember hyperbolic trig, which you should know, uh, sine of x can be in a form exactly like the hyperbolic trig formula, except that it's it'll, it'll have complex numbers. So for sine of x, it'll look like this, and this is all over 2i, and cosine of x is going to equal to e to the i of x plus e to the negative i of x over 2 instead of the i. Okay? So this is what we're going to be using uh, sometimes. Okay? So it's just like hyperbolic trig. Just remember to have the i at the bottom for sine of x. Okay? So we have this integral here. We have this weird looking integral with sine of 10x over sine of x. You could use, you know, trig identities to manipulate whatever. Uh, I don't know how you're gonna deal with that because you'll end up like, what? This would be, this would be like two cosine of five of x, sine of five of x, and then over sine of x, and then you're gonna have to like, do something nasty, I don't know. Uh, good luck, um, I will say. Good luck. So this integral, is, it's actually not a very easy, friendly integral. So what we're going to do is we're going to complexify it. Okay, we're going to complexify this integral. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it in terms of imaginary numbers. So remember, right, if you, if you remember the formula that for sine of x, it is e to the ix minus e to the negative ix over 2i. Okay, because we're going to use it in top and bottom, the 2i is going to cancel out. So, what we're going to have is we're going to have i10x minus e to the negative i10x over e to the ix minus e to the negative ix. Okay. Cool. Uh, now what? How, how do we continue from here? How on earth are we going to continue from here? Okay, 
So let's let's just so this looks weird to us, right? Where where do we how do we even simplify this? So let me just show you, right? Let's call this um, let's call this portion a and let's call this portion b. So what we have is we have a to the power of ten minus b to the power of ten over a minus b. Okay, that is that is a ten. Now. In geometric series, or polynomial division, whatever, right? If you think about like this, right? Or or no, no, even even better yet, even better yet, uh, like this, right? Oh, this is x plus y. Okay. What about like x cubed minus x y? Oh, this is going to equal to x squared plus x y plus y squared, right? Okay, what about x to the power of 4? Right, this is going to equal to x cubed plus x squared y, xy squared, y cubed, and etc. Right, so it's going to be the exact same way here. Okay, so we're, the reason why we're writing this is this is like our reference. Okay, this is going to reference for us. This is, this is a reference for us. So... Simplifying this is a to the power of 9, okay, plus a to the power of 8 times b, and then a7 for b square plus dot dot dot, all right? But, however, we do need to find a middle term. What's the middle term? What is, what is our middle term? So we have 9, let's see, 8, 1, 7, 2, 6, 3, 6, 3, 5, 4, ah, I think, 5, 4, and it's going to be like 4, 5, okay, and then it continues off mirroring up to B9, okay, so that's what we have, okay, cool, so now how do we write it in terms back to E to the I power, right, so now back to the E to the I power, when we simplify this, we get, okay, e to the power of uh, 9ix plus, this is e to the ix times e to the negative ix. So we have 8ix minus uh, ix, so that's going to be 7ix here, right? And it's going to be the same thing, right? It's, it'll be minus 2ix for us. And then... We, you know, it, it keeps going. 3ix, right? You, you start to see a pattern here. And then this, this comes from here, right? 5 minus 4, 1. Okay, 4 minus 5. Oh, and then it comes back mirroring. And then we get a mirror version of what we have. A mirror version of what we have, right? Up to like negative 9ix. Okay. Now, how do we bring it back to real form? Remember that cosine of x is equal to 2ix plus e to the ix, uh, which is what we have here. The only thing is we just have to multiply 2. Okay, so our answer is 2 times the whole thing, right? You, you know, if you want to factor it out. And so we have cosine of x plus cosine of 3x plus cosine of 5x plus cosine of 6, I'm uh, sorry, 7x and then plus cosine of 9x. Wow. Okay. So that's that's what we had here. And of course, by periodicity, this whole thing is going to equal to zero. Okay, so that integral, it just equals to zero, which we would have never thought. Or maybe you did, because you're good at graphing. But uh, to algebraically solve this, you complexify it. You're going to see this a lot. You're going to do this a lot, especially when you see something like this. And then uh, turn it back into cosines and you know utilize periodicity
to save time. Okay, all of that cubed. All right, things has gotten serious now. Okay, so this this integral is actually from Harvard MIT integration B, and um, I'm impressed to whoever could solve this. <laughs> like very impressed to any high schooler that could solve this. Very impressed. Uh, but holy hell, I would have never be able to solve this without knowing complexification. Okay, so we're going to complexify the integral again, right, from 0 to 2 pi. And we have, let's see, 3ix minus negative 3ix over e to the ix minus e to the negative ix cubed. <coughs> okay. And again, uh, just to, you know, we can write a reference, right? If you need to reference, you can go ahead. There's nothing wrong with that. This is to prevent from making small mistakes, right? I'd rather be accurate than, you know, mentally uh, exhausting myself, right? And we know that this is going to give us e to the 2ix um, plus 1 plus e to the negative 2ix, okay? Because this, this is e to the ix times e to the negative ix, okay? And this is what's going to give us. So now we have, now be careful, be very careful. This is cubed. We are being cubed. We have 2 cosine of 2x plus 1 cubed. How do we go from here? Periodicity. This is where periodicity comes in. And we know that we're going to have a square and a 1. So we have a 1 plus, and then we have like a squared version, cosine of this, right? By using periodicity, this is 1 plus, let's see, this is going to be 2. Um, 1 plus 2. Did I do this correctly? I want to make sure I do this correctly. Oh, I did not do this correctly. Um, the, when it's squared, we have times 3. So this is going to be is it cubed, squared, yeah, times 3. So this should have been 12. So we have 12, and then we have the half here. 6. Yep, that sounds, that seems to be right. So our answer should be 14 pi. Okay? So again, periodicity, be very careful with periodicity. And yeah, complexifying uh, the integral really saves us. Of course, we're going to come across an integral where it's going to be tediously bashy. So we have a speed bashing integral here. Um, do you want to do trig identities? You could. Or you could use trig reduction formula, which means using integration by parts. But uh, that's a high power, so I don't know if I want to do trig reduction. Um, most likely not. So instead, I'm going to cheat by doing complexifying the integral. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. If we complexify the integral, uh, this is uh, to the power of 6 dx. Okay, so we pretty much have a plus b squared, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, to the power of 6. And if you know your Pascal's triangle, uh, I only know up to 5. So let's see, that's going to be 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. Okay. So 1 to the power of 2, 6. And then we have, let's see, a plus b. So we have e to the uh, i, 6x, or 6ix, I, I should say. 6ix. Right. And then we have 6 to e to the 4ix plus 15, 2ix, uh, and then 20. And then the rest is just going to mirror, right? So what we have is one, uh, 1 over 64. We're going to have 2 times cosine of 6x plus uh, 12 
cosine of 4x plus 30 of cosine 2x within the 20 itself. And now, look how fast I'm going, right? This is, uh, let me divide 2 to everywhere. And now we have our answer. This is, um, this is going to be sine of 6x over 6, right? And then, let's see, I divide 2, so it's 6, uh, 6 over 4. That's going to be 3 halves of sine of 4x. 15, uh, let's see, 15 over 2, yep. And this is just 20, oh, I divide 2, so it's 10, 10x plus c, okay? Look how fast that was, right? Uh, using Without using trig identity, without using trig reduction, right? It's the fact of, of this and simplifying this, right? It's, it's the complexifying that helps us, uh, you know, change it into a trig identity, right? This is the fastest way of finding a trig identity of this, pretty much, okay? So, uh, again, you, I think that's the hardest part is just doing the, the algebra, the getting used to the binomial. And then once you're used to the binomial algebra stuff, change it back into cosines, and then integrate, okay? Oh boy, another one of these. You thought secant cube was a bad integration by parts integral? You should check this out. <laughs> so, how, how, do we solve, how do we solve this? I mean, you could use integration by parts. That's, that is, that's actually not bad. Integration by parts is not bad. You, you just, it'll just be like, integrating secant cube okay now however we could we could use complexifying the integral right so remember that cosine let me just write 2x 6 that cosine is e to the i ln of x plus e to the negative i ln of x right because ln of x is inside cosine and now what we have is this is x to the power of i plus x to the power of negative i to x6 oh this is just power rule right this is just power rule and so you know we have x i minus 6 plus negative i minus 6 dx right and then this is like what a half of x i minus 5 i minus 5 and then so the the hardest part here is manually you know turning it back into um that's a plus turning it back into uh real in terms of real numbers right because this was a real function we just we complexified it and we have to turn it back to real function. So the most annoying part here is conjugating the, the tedious part, the tedious stuff. Okay, so if I conjugate, I have to be very careful. Uh, so let's see, we're gonna get something like uh, one plus uh, i plus five, x to the power of i minus five. This is going to be 1 plus, let's see, 26, uh, i plus 5, 26, it's just going to be negative 26, so just be very careful, and then we have, I mean, we, we know the conjugation of this, this is going to be like 26, i minus 5, x to the power of, um, I'm going to factor the negative out, just like that okay <sighs> yeah this is this is just the most annoying part that's it that's that's why I'm not a fan of complexification it's just the conjugation is just the most annoying part okay and now uh, when you simplify this you can rearrange it uh, very carefully 
and we're gonna switch we're gonna switch 26 and 2 and you'll see why uh, notice that if I bring out the 2 um, let's see we have x i here and we have x negative i here okay uh, let's do the plus version so I'm gonna I'm gonna go by very fast uh, we have i I notice we have i I could use this i and put it under right so I'm gonna have See this i here, I'm going to put it under, that's going to give me a negative x to the power of negative i. And then I'm going to, use, I'm going to utilize the 2. And because I put this i under, underneath, right? So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm changing it back to real functions. Because you cannot leave your answer in complex form. You cannot do that. They will disqualify you. So we have to change it back. And then what we had left was we had like 5 and then we have xi um, oh I'm sorry uh, the 5 the 5 that we had the negative 5 the x to the power of 5 I almost forgot about that back that out and then 5xi and then the minus x to negative i um, is that correct right oh I'm sorry I'm, I'm factoring the negative out. Okay, I was like, I could have sworn, but no, I factored out the negative. Right, I factored out the negative, factoring out the negative 5. Okay, and then again, I brought in the 2, switch places with 2 and 26. Okay, again, this is the most annoying part. Okay, so this is our answer. So our answer is 26x5 underneath, and then what we have is this is sine of ln of x minus 5 of cosine of ln of x plus c okay and holy hell that was you know the, the most annoying part was just you know complex algebra that's it because you can easily mess up uh, a lot of your coefficients if you're not very careful. Oh god, x to the power of 5 e to the negative x sine of x dx. Integration by parts? Probably not, because that's nasty. Um, how about Laplace? I'm just kidding, we haven't learned that yet. We haven't learned Laplace, but um, you could use Laplace. You could. Uh, that might be how that, that that might be my route I would use Laplace but we haven't learned that so don't worry um, but here uh, let's try complexifying the integral if we complexify the integral so here's how it looks like so when we complexify the integral we're gonna turn this sine of x remember that sine of x was the imaginary part of e to the ix right so you could actually do that inside the integral. You can do that inside the integral. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to have an imaginary part, x5 e to the negative x, and now that sign is now e to the ix dx. Okay? So this is, this is now from 0 to infinity x to the power of 5 of e to the negative and then this is like 1 uh, minus x, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 1 minus i x, okay? Alright, and now you just kind of do uh, integration by parts-ish, which I will not do uh, because I'm lazy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let u equal x 1 minus i. Okay, what that's going to give me, what that's going to give me is 1 over 1 minus i. Okay, from 0 to infinity. And now I got u to the power of 5. Now remember that u is 
I mean, I'm sorry, x, x is equal to u over 1 minus i. So what I got is 1 minus i to the power of 5 here. Okay, this comes from the x5. Okay, so do not forget that. Why am I doing this? Well, take a look. What is this? This is a gamma function. Oh, cool. So now my answer is literally just the 5 factorial 1 minus i to the power of 6. Okay, but how do we get it back to real? This is where, again, I'm not, I'm not a fan of complexifying the integral because complex algebra is so annoying. <laughs> okay? All right, so how do we, how do we solve this? How, how do we deal with this? Okay, so 1 minus i, if you square this, right, this is equal to negative 2i. Okay? So then that means that to the power of 6, you're cubing this, that's going to give us a negative 8i, I believe, right? Oh, no, no, the negative cancels out because of the i cube. The i cube is negative i. So what we have is this is positive uh, 8i. Okay, so our answer here, let's see, we have 120, 120 over 8i, which is equal to negative i, right? And so now our answer with the imaginary part, we do have an imaginary part. This is our imaginary part. Our answer is 120 over 8, which means that this whole integral is equal to negative 15. Okay, right? So again, very simple, right? Complexifying the integral actually made it a lot simpler we use the gamma function, the factorial integral, right? We take advantage of that. And then uh, the most annoying part was just uh, complex algebra, okay? Now we have the Fresnel, I think that's how you pronounce it, the Fresnel integral. Uh, but a lot of, a lot of physics people uh, knows what this is. So how do we deal with this? So we have a cosine. So that means that we're going to use the, the real the real part of the function of the of the of the function of this whole integral technically. Uh, and now this is e to the i x square. Right? Dx. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to turn it as negative of negative i x squared. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, hold on a second. Ain't no way you can do this. Yes, I can, actually. And let me tell you why. This is because that's just a complex number, right? This is a complex number. And so in complex numbers, in complex algebra, you know, you... you <laughs> you break a lot of rules, right? Because we're not dealing with real numbers. This is a complex number now. So what I'm doing is I'm forcing this into a Gaussian integral. Does that make sense? And I do that uh, with the privilege of using uh, complex numbers. So, okay. And now I can let u equal, uh, this would be, well, I could just use negative square root of negative i literally i could just do this right i know it looks illegal <laughs> okay i don't blame you no matter how uncomfortable this looks to you this is allowed because we are dealing with complex numbers okay so because of this this is this is technically allowed we we can do this and so now what we have here is we have 1 over the square root of negative i, and now this is going to be from negative infinity to infinity, and then we have the Gaussian integral. Now we have the Gaussian integral. This is exactly what I wanted, right? Now this is just uh, square root of negative i 
right? And then this is just, well, this is square root of pi. Okay. But now, how are we going to get it back to real? How are we going to get it back to real? Uh, let me actually change this. Negative i. Uh, 1 over negative i is actually equal to i. So what we actually have is square root of pi times i. Okay. Uh, but how do we change this back to real? How do we, how do we change this back to real numbers? Uh, okay, so don't freak out. Okay, don't freak out. Don't freak out. So square root of i... Square root of i, this is i to the power of one half. Okay. So what do we what, what do we do with this? What what on earth are we how how do we deal with this? Okay. So what what is so what I like to use is I'm gonna go e to the i pi plus 1 equal to 0. Oh, you know this formula, right? This famous, beautiful formula. Okay, I'm going to take advantage of this, negative 1. Uh, how do I make this into i? Oh, you square root it. Okay, that's going to give me pi over 2. So that's i. Now, how do I get square root of i? i pi over 4, and now you have square root of i. Ah, so what we have here, let me actually erase this portion, okay? Now what we have is this, this is now square root of pi e to the i pi over 4. Okay, cool. Thank you, Euler, for that. Now, now we can change this back into... The cosine plus i sine formula, right? So now this is what cosine of pi over four. That's going to be square root of two over two plus i square root of two over two, right? We only want the real part, okay? We only want the real part, meaning the imaginary part is just going to, you know, we don't want the imaginary part. We want the real part. Cool. So the real part of this is equal to square root of pi times square root of 2 over 2, meaning that now the answer is square root of pi over 2, right? Because this, this is equal to 1 over root 2. So the real part of this is square root of pi over 2, and this is our answer. Okay, that's how you solve this famous Fresno integral. Okay? This, this, that's, this, that's, it's an actual name for it. It's called the Fresno integral. And you see this a lot in like physics, um, electrical engineering, I believe. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's, that's, that's how you solve this integral. Okay. All right. That's about it. That's the last integral. Uh, we will get into more uh, trickier stuff with complexifying. Okay. So stay tuned for that. All right, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.